afternoon good afternoon and welcome to this lecture of uh, electronic semester 2 itm nagpur university nagpur myself dr nd mishra am head and associate professor department of electronics the mathura das mota college of science and uh, yeah i am trying to uh, i am trying to tell you about uh, something which is associated with uh, say uh, light emitting diodes so let us begin with that because this is a topic which is left uh, in our uh, in uh, in our paper 1 right so i guess my screen is visible to you let us begin with the starting what we have studied up till now so we have studied everything about semiconductors and we have studied about the intrinsic semiconductor that is a semiconductor in its pure form so silicon is supposed to be the uh, pure form of a semiconductor and this is the atomic structure of the silicon right so it is it is having four electrons in its outermost shell and i have told you that the completely filled orbit uh, along with the nucleus is taken as a core and will be taking only four electrons so it is shown in this uh, crystal structure of the silicon right this is what i have shown you earlier and making two four covalent bonds with the neighboring four atoms Uh, with the silicon and in this pure form this is called as the intrinsic semiconductor a semiconductor in its pure form uh, then uh, this is how it works so at absolute zero temperature it is uh, it behaves as a insulator and at room temperature it behaves as a conductor therefore it is called as a uh, say semiconductor right so i have told you this uh, also i told this also so it can be knocked and therefore the current flows at room temperature so this was shown and this is the impurity which is supposed to be added uh, to a pure sem semiconductor now what is doping i guess i have told you doping is the mixing of uh, the impurity with the pure intrinsic semiconductor and then uh, extrinsic semiconductor is formed okay so p type of a semiconductor when boron and gallium last time i guess somebody has asked me what are the uh pentavalent and trivalent impurities i will show i will be showing you uh the uh say the periodic table also so boron and gallium are supposed to be the trivalent impurities and if you uh, means they are having three uh, electrons in their outermost shell so this is group 3 elements where we are having boron aluminum gallium indium and tm so these are the trivalent impurities and Uh, this is to be added while uh, making a p type of a semiconductor right so what happens in that i have told you earlier so three electrons will make three covalent bonds and one space is left this space is called as a hole so we have discussed everything about this p type and this is the absence of uh, electron creates an effect of positive charge hence the name that is called as p type semiconductor and this is how it happens uh, by using the band theory okay so this is n type so pentavalent impurity like phosphorus and arsenic are to be added over there uh, and uh, to form this, this these are group 5 elements which are over here so nitrogen phosphor arsenic antimony bismuth these are uh, group 5 elements and uh, they are having three uh, sorry they are having five electrons in their outer motion so you can see here that the four electrons will make four covalent bonds and one electron is excess and due to that uh, excess of electron it gains the negative polarity and therefore it is called as uh, n type of a semiconductor right so yeah so this is that uh, description of that n type it takes only very small quantity of impurity and there are electrons excess of electrons uh, due to which we are having uh, the negative charge on the ion and it becomes an n type and this is the structure of a pn junction diode i told you and this is the fermi level that is actually the band theory what happens to the energy level of uh, say pn junction diode so when it is connected to forward wire you are able to see here see how how uh, uh, nicely it is shown so when it is depletion layer so the electrons and the holes are being repelled by each other uh, yeah so it is showing you forward wire right now so as you go on increasing the voltage The, there is a flow of holes and electrons and the uh, pn junction diode is said to be in forward bias and the current starts flowing through that right so this was the new voltage that i have shown you and this was the pn junction diode uh, 
I will show you one more time. Yeah. So this is the depletion layer. This is formed, and when we connect it to a reverse bias, the depletion layer is increasing, right? As you decrease the uh, say the voltage, the depletion layer will decrease, and as you again uh, increase the positive voltage, then the depletion layer will be, will be dissolved, and there will be no current flowing through that. So this is how uh, it works. So this is reverse bias, and this is the forward bias. Yes, I guess it is visible. It is nicely shown in this animation, right? And here it is show, showing you the graph. So in forward bias, the depletion layer is dissolved, and the current flows through that. Okay. So and this is how uh, the band theory is there. The PN junction diode is formed. This is what we have studied, and yeah, this is about the band theory of that for the energy level of electron. And this is the forward bias structure. We have discussed this earlier. So positive terminal is connected to p-type and negative terminal is connected to n-type, which repairs the electrons in the n-type and holes in the p-type. And accordingly, uh, the depletion layer will go on decreasing. As you further increase it, the depletion layer will be dissolved. And if you are able to see, there are this negative ions and this positive ions. These are the neutral particles which are, uh, say, uh, opposing the flow of this. So as you increase the voltage, the flow is being uh, taken. So that is how the forward bias starts. And this is the forward bias energy level diagram. And this is the connection of, say, the reverse bias condition. So when we connect a negative terminal of a battery to P-type and positive terminal to uh, N-type, then the depletion layer will increase and the diode is said to be in reverse bias condition and there will be no current flowing through the diode. Now, what is an LED? Yes, this is what, what is the LED? This is what is today's topic. We are, we need to study today. What is an LED? So LED is actually the light emitting diode. You have studied this light emitting diode or you have not studied, I guess. You have seen these LEDs. Uh, in your TV and your day-to-day -day life. So these, what are these LEDs? These are nothing but the diode, but they are actually emitting the light, right? So whenever they are connected in forward bias region, region, uh, forward bias region, then they uh, act as the uh, light. So they uh, generate the source of light, right? So whenever there is transition between the electron and holes, then there is the emission of energy in the form of light, and that, that is why they are called as light emitting diode. Okay, so this is the structure of uh, the periodic table of uh, uh, elements, and uh, some of them are here. So, phosphorus uh, are there, gallium is there, and some more uh, materials are there which are, which are responsible for uh, this this type of phenomena where the recombination of electron and holes are going to emit the photons in the form of light energy, right? So this is the basic concept. Now, this is the construction of LED. So LED consists of uh, this whole materials. So we are having a epoxy on top of it. Then we are having a semiconductor chip on over here where we are having, say, uh, say P-type and N-type material in this, two, in this yellow region and they are being mounted on these two plates and uh, uh, these are the anode and cathode uh, pins which are which are used to connect the things and the chips are mounted in a reflected spray order to increase the light output so as soon as the light is being uh, emitted it has to uh, get get spread all over the environment and that is being taken on a reflective tray so we have taken this over here so this is the cavity and this is the wire bone and uh, uh, these are all the lead frames and all. So this is the construction of an LED. Simply we draw a diode with arrows. So that is the symbol of LED. So I will show you how does an LED work. So whenever we, we apply a false positive forward bias uh, on this chip, then what happens? Uh, uh, the the, the recombination of electron and holes in that, like this. So whenever there is a recombination of uh, electrons from n-type to the holes in the p-type, then there is the emission of light. See over here the energy band diagram. So what I need to tell you is, when these electrons, 
recombine with the holes, uh, jumping from this energy to this energy, there is a emission of light, right, as shown over here. So whenever the electrons are excited, they jump into uh, the highest energy level and they gain some energy and they jump into the highest energy level. And when they return that, during this returning back of the uh, electrons from higher energy level to lower energy level, what it does, it emits that extra energy. And when it emits that extra energy, it emits in the form of, say, light. Okay, so light is being, uh, light is being used over here. So light uh, is being emitted by here. And this is the symbol of, say, the semiconductor, right? Uh, this is the symbol of LED, light emitting diode. So whenever this light LED is connected in forward bias, that uh, there is a recombination, there is a flow of current through the diode, and it emits a photon, right? So it, when it emits a photon, uh, it, it comes out in the form of light energy. Okay, so these are some of the comparisons of LED array packing density, means how the LEDs are being packaged. Right, so here you are, you are able to see only nine LEDs are being, uh, say, mounted on uh, this 10 mm to 10 mm uh, area, right? So it is around 100 millimeter square area. And on this 100 millimeter square, initially, where we were having dual inline package, uh, around nine LEDs were uh, expected to mount. Now at the same uh, SMD, means, uh, say, at the higher version of that, then 40 LEDs were supposed to bound, and now we are having the core that is COB, and around 342 LEDs can be mounted in the same surface area of 100 millimeter square. So imagine we are having LED TVs at our home. Now we are using these types of arrangements. So we are having LEDs of different colors, and we can generate different colors uh, on that, and accordingly. Uh, we'll be using those LEDs for, for different, uh, say, purposes. So this is all about the LEDs and uh, the configuration or the combination is around gallium, phosphor. Phosphors are basically they play the important role in uh, the LEDs, manufacturing of LEDs, because phosphors uh, are the ones responsible for um, generation of, uh, say, uh, generation of photons, right, in that. So this was all, this was all about the uh, LEDs that we are supposed to have, and uh, yeah. So uh, actually, they were, they are having uh, gallium arsenide and gallium phosphide, right? So gallium arsenide and gallium phosphide are the one; uh, those are responsible for uh, the emission of energy. Uh, So uh, here it is, it is shown over there that we can, uh, we can uh, have gallium arsenide and gallium phosphide uh, to form different colors. So phosphors basically are used to generate different colors in LED. So we can have all colors of LEDs like this. So green, yellow, uh, uh, red, and the combination of these LEDs can give you different colors, right? So that is what we generally uh, see while uh, we are we are using the LED TV, so we are generating different colors, and by that different combinations, we are trying to make different faces on it, right? So uh, that actual faces are being generated by using uh, LEDs. So we we are now uh, earlier earlier we were using LCDs, now we are using LED LED TVs. Okay, so LEDs are basically uh, the same type of diodes that we have studied, they are pn and diode itself, because it is having P-type and N-type material, as usual, as we have uh, seen in pn junction diode. But if you use different materials like gallium arsenide and gallium phosphide, like so uh, for uh, the P-type and N-type of uh, semiconductors, in that recombination, what happens? When we connect these types of uh, pn junction diodes, to in forward bias condition. Reverse bias condition, it won't work, right? So in reverse bias, the LEDs 
don't work. But when we connect these LEDs in forward bias, the, whenever there is the recombination of holes and electrons inside uh, inside that chip, then it emits uh, photons, right, in the form of light energy, right? This is the basic concept behind uh, the working construction of say, LEDs. This is the, uh, the type, uh, periodic table. This is the construction of LEDs that we are expecting to have. So we are having epoxy or lens case. These are wire bound, reflective cavity where the light actually, the photons here actually are being emitted. And due to that, the reflective uh, surfaces will uh, energize uh, the photons and will have a bright light, right? So these are the compositions of the construction of LEDs. Then uh, this is how it works. So whenever we connect this in forward bias region, uh, there is the emission of uh, photons, right, like this. And when it emits light, so the epoxy, epoxy lens will uh, again make it brighter. And we will see that it is uh, glowing, right? So it is glowing. So that that is the basic concept. So just it, it works uh, in forward bias whenever we connect it to uh, forward bias condition. So when positive terminal of the battery is connected to the anode and uh, negative terminal is connected to cathode, uh, then it is supposed to be forward bias. And after say 0.7 volts, more than 0.7 volts, the LED will start glowing. Right. So if you decrease the voltage, the intensity of LED also decreases accordingly. So it is, uh, this is the working principle of LED. Uh, here, uh, I am, uh, need to show you that whenever there are combination of electrons and holes in this uh, region, electrons from N type and the holes from the P type are, are recombined in forward bias condition. So what happens while jumping, they emit the light energy. And uh, this light, this photon, uh, it comes out in the form of light, right? So that is how the, this is the basic concept of LED, working concept of LED, and these are the packages that are available uh, in different forms of LED. So this was the last topic that we are supposed to have, and this is what is known as uh, wall, right? So when, whenever we are having the flow in only one direction, we call it as a wall, right? Similarly, the diode uh, flows the current only in one direction and in reverse bias, the diode does not conduct. And that is why we say that diode only conducts in forward bias condition. I guess it's okay. Uh, it is audible, right? So the basic concept of diode is, uh, yeah. So basic concept of diode is diode all, only conducts in forward bias. It does not conduct in reverse bias. And if you if you increase the reverse voltage, now what happens if you increase the reverse voltage beyond uh, the level of damage of that diode, then it will it will burn out, right? It will it will get destroyed. So we have to use uh, only that much of voltage, reverse voltage, at which the diode remains in its normal position, it doesn't damage, right? So that is the reverse bias condition. This is the application of reverse voltage of a PA to the PN junction diode, which causes transient current to flow as both electrons and holes pulled away from the uh, junction. So I've told you a small leakage current flows through that, and that leakage current is due to these ions. So these bulky ions, which is shown in the center, uh, are responsible for uh, that small current. That is called as the reverse leakage current, right? So this is the this is uh, the energy diagram where we are able to see that the valence band and conduction band is having more energy level, and due to which there is no current flowing through that. So uh, practically or theoretically, there should not be uh, any current flowing through this. And this is the characteristic diagram of uh, say P N junction diode. And whenever there is 0.7 volts, increase in 0.7 volts, the current starts flowing through that. And in the reverse bias condition at a very high voltage, as you are able to see over here in this graph, there is small leakage current yes, is supposed to flow always through the diode when it is connected in reverse bias. But if you increase the reverse voltage and if there is a breakdown, which we call it as avalanche breakdown, then a huge amount of current flows through that diode. And the, 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 okay.
Hello, do you have any questions? Uh, this unit is complete, and I've tried to uh, uh, complete all the topic of this uh, paper on unit one. And this is very important as far as semiconductors are concerned because all all sorts of uh, say components are being made by using these semiconductors. Even in digital circuits, when we when we uh, study uh, say. Uh, gates or flip flops they all are made of these semiconductors so semiconductor the concept of semiconductor is very very important as far as uh, say basic electronics or digital electronics is concerned so remember this i guess you have understood uh, the i guess you have understood the semiconductors and if you have any problem so please let me know uh, thank you thank you very much for joining and i will be uploading this video on uh, youtube also so please go through my youtube channel like subscribe and share my videos and if you have any doubts in that please don't forget to comment on that so that i can rectify uh, your doubts so thank you very much again and stay tuned for for uh, more lectures on this on my youtube channel thank you thank you very much stay home stay safe take care see you in the next class good day bye have a nice